Hi, I'm uh, Yves Mulkers at uh, Oracle Open World in San Francisco. I'm together with uh, one of my big examples uh, from, from the past, uh, from his Microsoft time, uh, Bruno Aziza. So Bruno, what are you doing now at, uh, at Oracle? Well, Yves, thank you so much for having me on your show and I've been watching you as well. So uh, I am now at Oracle and many of, of the folks in your community uh, know that uh, I was at Microsoft and then I did a set of startups after that and I am now back uh, at, uh, in a larger company uh, working uh, with TK Nam. Many folks in, in your community probably know him. He uh, used to work at Microsoft as well. He spent 20 years there and I spent seven years on myself. So we're working here on Oracle Analytics. So Oracle Analytics is a broad set of solutions. There are essentially three products that people need to think about when they think about Oracle Analytics. The first one is Oracle Analytics Cloud, which is our flagship product. It's cloud first, AI first, uh, analytics solution. It's really one of the few in the market um, and it's available for any uh, customer, our Oracle customers and non-Oracle customers. It's very open, collaborative and, and augmented solution. The second product is a product we call the Oracle Analytics Server, which is for, pro for customers that are on-premise today and, and want to move to the cloud at their own pace. So same capabilities you get it in the Oracle Cloud, but now you can also install it on your private cloud, on-premise and so forth and move to the cloud at your speed. And the third product that we introduced actually this week at uh, Open World is Oracle Analytics for Applications. And so this one focuses on providing you analytics capabilities as it relates to your application. So we start with Fusion applications. The first one is ERP. Then we will go to HCM and then we'll touch every Oracle application up to a point where we get to now data that's in an Oracle database. So imagine if you are not an Oracle application customer today, you know, a large portion of the enterprise data that's trusted for business today is in an Oracle database. And so we want to provide you an application specific, but also a, an analytics friendly approach that is a platform based. So you can use it for your data, for the Oracle application data and any other Oracle database out there. Yeah. Analytics, still a hot item. Yes. Well, since last year, what, what I feel I see more and more industrialization. Finally, we're getting the results uh, for the analytical applications. What do you see as, as the trends in analytics? Uh, well, compared to where we are starting to fiddle out about two years ago, now up to, hey, we need a model, we need to put it in production. Yes. But it's not working. So there are uh, quite a few things. If you've been in this space for, for a while, you know there are have been probably three, three uh, transitions. We started with an IT-centric view of analytics and was really stuck because you couldn't get analytics to a lot of folks. So we then the second you know, uh, part of our analytics life was really business driven and people downloading and, and using desktop tools to self-serve to information. And that really, I think, helped uh, democratize this idea of visualization and getting information to folks. The third phase that we're in is now kind of learn from the mistakes from the past. You know, I, mean, I think, it, I think a, uh, an issue with self-service is that now a lot of people have data. Are they understanding the data? Is it the same data that, of the folks they're collaborating with? And is it data that they actually are allowed to have? So it's a huge issue around governance. The third uh, phase of analytics now is what do we do about uh, augmented or the use of AI inside the analytics process? We are, have been very focused on that for the last five years. We have put AI in every touch point of the analytics process. So from data ingestion, how do we help you ingest data faster, secure it better? Uh, for instance, if you ingest data into the Oracle Cloud that is social security number, credit card numbers, we'll automatically detect that, protect it, so then your users can use the metadata, if you will, but they, they might not put your company at risk using the wrong data. Uh, in the process of creating information. So today we have what we call the empty canvas syndrome. Many of, of uh, the folks that are following you, I'm sure have dealt with that. You're looking at the dashboard creation experience, it's mm -hmm. empty and it's looking at you, who's gonna start first? <laughs> we have AI technology now that allows us to pro-populate, pre-populate if you will, uh, a dashboard for you because we understand the data, we understand the business, so we can help you get to insights faster. I mean. The, the whole point of analytics where, you know, where I think we fail is we focus too much on the technology itself. The reason why you have analytics is you can make the decisions so you can do your job. And that's what we're focused on. We have a unique approach because we're in the middle of the database business yeah. and the application business that we're both leaders in. So we have a particular approach to it and, mm -hmm. and we are going to take advantage of that position to serve as many customers as we can. So what we see from, from analytics, or what, what, where do you see the analytics is helping bringing the most gain at, at the customers for, uh, for Oracle? 
So as you can imagine at Oracle, you know, we touch just about every industry. And when people choose Oracle Analytics, they choose it for all employees. We're not focusing here on deployments of 10 or 20 or 100 people. Our customers deploy our, our capabilities across tens of thousands of users. And certainly, there are some industries or some use cases that are interesting. The first one is probably the NHS. NHS saves a, about a billion and a half using Oracle Analytics uh, to, pre, uh, pre, to preventively detect fraud, for instance, mm -hmm. which enables them now to use their, their information a lot better and their money better for doctors. Then you have examples of Scanska, for instance, construction. Construction companies that need to detect injuries before they occur so they can develop and deliver on their projects faster. You know, Connie, if you haven't heard of, of his story, uh, does a great job explaining how he's using data across SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, external data sources in Oracle in order to prevent injury. So that's, that's a great use case. And then finally, we have a Riverbed, which is a technology company here based in the Silicon Valley. They do something that many of you are probably interested in doing is, how do you get beyond the 35%? The issue today with analytics is that it's primarily av available to the specialists, the business analysts, the folks that know how to build dashboards. In fact, the industry here says that it's 35% is the adoption of any enterprise. Yeah. Only 35% of employees have access to information. I don't know if you think that's acceptable. We don't, because we think if you're investing that much money in analytics, everyone should get access to it. So an example of Connie from Riverbed, he has a deployment using our application. It's called Day by Day. It's an Oracle uh, mobile application that is AI powered. It is context aware, so it understands your location, your next meeting, and it provides you insights based on what it knows about you. Even goes as far as customizing visualization based on your preferences. And we really think that's where analytics is going to go next. At the Oracle Open World, we heard about, a lot about the uh, autonomous database, yes. the autonomous operating system. How do you think that will help analytics to, I think, well, I have an idea, it will go faster, easier, whatever. Uh, yeah. You talked about the adoption as well. So yes. how do you see that? So what's amazing, I think, with the autonomous data warehouse, is it, it, coupled with the analytics capabilities, it allows us to talk about a system of insights. What people want is they want answers, and they want to have the ability to ask as many questions as they can, as fast as they can. So certainly, you know, you get benefits from performance, but you also get benefit from the output you get from the system. I'll give you uh, an example. One of the partners I was talking to yesterday looked at the Autonomous Data Warehouse plus OAC compared to other industry solutions, and they found that the price per query was 10 times cheaper than any other cloud solution. When I hear that, I don't hear the price of query, I hear the price of the question. Think about it at your organization. Is it expensive to ask a question? Because you know that every question is going to lead to another six. So what we want to provide is a system where you don't have to ask that, that question. Yeah, you yeah. can ask as many questions as you want, the biggest questions that you want, and we want to enable you to get there. So I think that's the game changer here, is that when you have the autonomous data warehouse and you have OAC with it, you don't have to worry about what operates the system. We do that for you. And it's focused on the problem you're trying to solve, which is getting insights to as many people as possible. And for the future, I'd like to ask as well, uh, what do you see still less challenges? We have a lot of uh, capabilities these days to do analytics in the right way, get the adoption. I think we're at a real turning point yeah. on that. So I still think about what are the challenges you see coming and what things uh, will be even become better in the future. I think the challenge today is probably our fear of AI. And I think we are falling a little bit uh, to the hype of what's going on with AI. Mm -hmm. What I will give, uh, give you to think about, what we see with customers innovating with AI, they think about the relation between their people and the data in three areas. One, there's the area of automation, which is a very simple way to think about it. And we know how to do this in many industries, right? The manufacturing industries, we know that you can automate binary decisions that frankly, you know, frankly, a human shouldn't do it. So, so we shouldn't be afraid of that. That's just a, a way to progress. Then there is augmentation. And augmentation, think about it as something that's going to enable humans to do better with what they have. So just like you have glasses so you can see better, mm -hmm. AI can enable you to do that. Just like I was saying earlier, 80% of the time that you spend today is collecting and cleaning data. Do you want your business analyst to do that? You don't. You want them to use your, their imagination so they can innovate for your company. That's where augmentation plays a role. 
And then there's a third area where AI really is not going to be able to help much this collaboration. What we're doing here, mm -hmm. it's really hard for two machines to have a conversation like that. So break up your decisions or your decision process across those three areas and don't be afraid of AI. I mean, it's just a normal evolution. We, this is the fourth industry uh, revolution we've gone through and it will create value and it will create job. Right? The, what, what creates jobs is creating more value and we're on the path to do that. Yeah, so you still see the future pretty bright. A bright right? future, Even yes, we're just scratching AI. the surface. Exactly. Yeah. Bruno, nice talking to you. Nice talking Thanks to you as well. Much. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you.